Hello, welcome back to Horizon Champions League. My name is Marcin Nemshlipovic and I'm here with Alexander Raven Bagley. And uh, we are jumping straight into the game. It's turn two already. What is happening here, Raven? Yeah, so we have Life Coaches, Rogue versus Orange's Druid. So, fairly aggressive Druid list we saw from Orange earlier. Um, we did see the Fell Reavers, and Life Coach is playing his sort of slower rogue with the gadget zans and the lack of oils by the looks of things as well. So, pretty interesting lineup. Two decks that you don't aren't too common in the competitive scene at the moment. But definitely, both players are you know doing their own style here, and uh, it's going to be tough to see which one comes out on top. As Orange has got a pretty quick start here. Yeah, absolutely. With that uh, Aspirin not answered, um, unanswered from Life Coach, he was able to get the Shredder earlier, and then he will be able to play Druid of Claw. Is that is there even an answer right now to deal with it? Not really. So Life Coach will have to decide uh, on one of the four drops. Uh, Violet Teacher does contest both of those minions, but on the other hand, Life Coach will not get the full value out of it. If he decides to go for a Pillager, it does contest the four free, and he gets a coin if it dies. Yeah, the issue, the argument for the Violet Teacher means like Orange will have to use the Shredder and maybe a Hero Power, which on turn five actually does slow him down a little bit. He does have the Shade though, so he could make that happen. And um, the problem on Life Coach's end is that any play doesn't really work into a good turn five play either, because it's not like he wants to just drop Gadget Zan with the coin from the Pillager the following turn, because then it's just Gadget Zan pass and then it will probably die. So uh, really awkward, and Life Coach is going to go for the Teacher, just to make Orange's turn as, as awkward as possible, I guess. Yeah, sometimes you just have to go, uh, to use those uh, those plays to uh, fight versus aggro decks. Um, normally, you obviously would like to have Violet Teacher with spells, but sometimes you just have to play those cards and throw them away, like uh, Druid using Force of Nature just to clear, clear minions instead of thinking about combo. But for now, this uh, situation looks really good for Orange overall. And uh, because he got a swipe, he might actually not be that concerned about the Violet Teacher and uh, maybe just slam Druid of a Claw and go for face. Yeah, there's also another option where he could actually swipe Living Roots, the Violet Teacher, and sort of just keep the same board again and just go, you know use that option and say, well, you know, if you couldn't deal with the board that well that turn, then maybe you can the next turn. It doesn't like he's going to run the Shredder in, though. Clear off the Violet Teacher is a bit of a threat. And now, even Fan of Knives doesn't look too amazing. He kind of just needs the uh, Deadly Poison for a flurry. But backstab onto the 2 3 with a Fan of Knives seems a little bit more reasonable. And he can even flurry if he wants yeah, to clear he, the board completely. He actually had a possibility to attack with the weapon and then flurry and uh, Fan of Knives to clear everything. And he still has it uh, if he goes for, if he really wants to get rid of Shade, just throwing those two cards away and throwing away the weapon. Yeah, the only thing Live Coach has to really sit and think about is if he uses like two or three of his spells in hand, then his hand only has minions. And again, it's the issue of, well, Gadgets and turn six on its own is bad. Whereas if he went Gadgets and like backstab, then at least, you know, he gets value and has the 4 4. Uh, so it's going to be a really tough turn for Life Coach to choose how much he wants to commit to fully clearing the board or just, you know, like clearing off the 2-1, the doing what you said, and then s maybe saving the backstab for next turn. Well, he can save the backstab anyway. It's just like you found out nice first, then you draw a card, you attack with your weapon into the 2 to um oh yeah because he, yeah he'll just take the damage only yeah, yeah and, right. and then you flurry uh so that's one option but um sometimes playing minions is a bad uh, is a better option if you are able to to set up a big minion on the board that needs to be cleared uh going uh, for the aspirin uh, obviously as well to get rid of the mana crystal yeah now and another bit of a tough term from rng he definitely has options so it's not tough in that respect but it's whether he wants to say straight up swipe and then just carry on, maybe play the living roots, um, or whether he wants to druid of the claw and maybe just ignore the four five. But ignoring the four, ignoring the minions against rogue always feels rough. Yeah, that's absolutely true. So he needs to think about the other turns as well. If you if you on this turn, if you kill it, uh, rogue will get um, actually living roots and and keeper is not terrible. You are giving him the coin, but you will be able. You will have a two four. You deal two damage to face. You deal actually five if you attack with the shade, as well. Uh, so that's something. Uh, with Druid of the Claw, you do stop the damage, and you still have to attack with your minions. Um, do you? I think the keep like... of the, the keep of the Grove plays nice. What about? It puts a lot of power on the board, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, like even Living Roots uh, to create minions. 
I was thinking, what do you what do you think about attacking with the shade? Because that's uh, one of the key things this turn. Like, do you keep the shade or do you feel like attacking with it? Because the weapon uh, has only one charge. So if, if Life Coach gets Deadly Poison, that will be an easy pick. But if he doesn't get the Deadly Poison, then the Shade is already starting dealing damage. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. I think, yeah, Orange wants to keep hold of the Shade because although he's got a big board, it's not presenting tons of damage. Whereas if the Shade lives, you know, at least another turn or so, then suddenly that's quite the threat in itself. Uh, Orange does have the follow-up next turn, but it's not too smooth he's probably just gonna have the druid of the claw but looking at life coach's current turn he, he does have gadget zan prep fan which draws him what three cards i think that's fine or even like coin dr boom because that's uh, one of the good ways but on the other hand there are so many minions what about prep fan coin boom <laughs> that's not bad as well yeah i mean that seems pretty reasonable uh, that's a good out. Um, I guess he's gone with the route of boom, puts so much pressure on the board, and gadgets, and it will draw him three cards, but when his next turns, if he'd done the gadgets and turn, if his next turn was going to be boom anyway, then does he need those cards at this moment in time? The problem was, like, he, Sorry, really needed, he really needed to fan, because the problem was too many minions, and uh, you yeah. always have to think about Savage Roar. Yeah, interesting thing about Orange's deck... We said it's like more aggressive, but we haven't seen things like the Raptors or anything. It's still Shade. So do you think this is more just mid, just mid range Druid, but with Foul Reavers? Um, well, considering the fact that Strife Cross playing Reno Lock and we ne almost never saw it, <laughs> I assume he can still have jugglers and the cards like that in his deck. He's just not drawing them. Yeah, that's true. And the wow, the bomb's just straight up killing the Shade. Kind of uh, doesn't feel fantastic for our engine. Now he tanks seven to face. To clear off that boom and now life coach got has got the initiative here double flurry is not great but um having a belcher is always nice um there, there will be dr boom from orange though yeah and maybe he can uh life coach is probably wanting to draw into something uh, a little bit beefier in terms of spells so that you can actually get them off there uh, to buff the auctioneer and get extra card draw or he could just slam a second belcher Hmm, this is tough. Um, I think we also have to mind Orange's health, because if he, if, if Life Coach uh, slams another Belcher, he will have um, a bit more power on board again. And um, But what about just using Auctioneer and one uh, Flurry? So like going for face with Belcher, dealing 3 damage, going uh, for one, one to face, and then slamming Auctioneer and Flurry. There is a good chance that they will actually die to the bombs. But then, like, Yeah, that's the scary part, isn't it? Can really leave the bombs on board. Like if you if you want to go for the second belcher, you probably attack into one of the bombs. Uh, then you attack into the second bomb with belcher, and then you play belcher and refer the weapon. Oh man! So boom bots, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Life course recognizes the fact that he needs cards. And his belcher has survived by looks of things. So the bot didn't kill the belcher. Um, and it hit face for four, two, four boom bots uh, from Orange there. Not too terrible, but probably most importantly, the Belcher is alive. And speaking of knife jugglers, Nymphs, you called it again. Yeah, he was just not drawing them. <laughs> so, um, knife juggler, the sec the, this knife juggler draw is not good. Uh, the, the other one was fine. But now, Orange is in an awkward position where he will not be able to kill uh, Gadget and Auctioneer, and that's bad. Like, you, you'd always want to kill it versus Rogue. Yeah, I mean, does this just look like Knife Juggler Druid of the Claw here, or do you think you have to go all in with Foul Reaver? And again, uh, Orange is at uh, 13 points of health. Um, fortunately for him, he's getting a taunt. But if, uh, if Life Coach gets enough damage, he might position himself to win the game in two turns uh, just by dealing damage. Yeah, and I guess we're going to see it as your Drake here, because the Belcher protects the 4-4 uh, in the form of the Gadget Zan, but you still need to do something about that bear. So I think the draw from the Drake's going to be okay, and at worst you run the 4-4 and the SI7 agent into actually uh, kill off the Druid of the Claw. Can you still... You can still squeeze in Flurry, but it doesn't do much. So you really want to draw something like, um, like uh, Eviscerate to deal with uh, Dr. Bomb easily. 
This is yeah, a this... really close game. <laughs> this is really yeah, close. and like, and the problem is like, Eviscerate would be good, um, but then he would have to draw on something to actually deal with the Druid of the Claw as well. He is going for the hit and the flurry to hopefully draw into something there. I don't know, like they draw into the Eviscerate maybe. Okay, he got the Pillager, so he will be able to kill the four four here with uh, Actioneer, and he's still alive for the moment. What can Orange get? Savage Roar. This means uh, nothing for now, but it will be really good next turn, especially because uh, Orange can still play double, ju double Juggler and Phil Reaver this turn. Yeah, and if Orange actually clears off and gets the Juggles on this 1-2, uh, that's actually pretty big because Life Coach is going to be hard pushed since the Flurry's already gone. And there are some knives juggling. Some knives are flying here. And Savage Roar in hand. Backstab. Well, the problem is that uh, Hero Power can deal with the 1 1, and then you have this Fell Reaver that you have to do something about. Uh, Deadly Poison, not really. Uh, you cannot kill everything, so Fell Reaver, so Fel Reaver kills you, whatever happens. Yeah, I think this is just game, because as you said, you can't actually deal with enough of the board to make Fell Reaver a problem, and the Druid Hero Power, and that, just that one juggle going down as well. Um, if the one juggle hit in the, uh, the taunt didn't happen and he could clear off the board, then at least it would mean the fell reaver would have to attack in. But there we go. Life Coach does lose the first match and Orange takes game one with his druid. That druid deck is, uh, is really fun. I mean, it's, it's a bit different than the normal druids you see. And uh, it was popular a couple of months ago, but uh, recently I haven't seen it uh, that often. Yeah, I think everyone's been playing like the tried and tested mid-range druid because it performs like reasonably well across all the board. Whereas sometimes like the felt the inclusion of fell reaver can be locked down really, really hard. So let's talk about the lineups a bit. Orange is um, out of the druid; he won't play it again. He still has his own rogue, and he is a paladin. Where life coach, uh, well, still bro rogue is still alive. Um, druid and warlock, and his warlock is a demon handlock, and again, an interesting pick. Yeah, yeah, it's re really interesting looking at um, it's really tough on how it lines up versus Orange's uh, lineup itself because the Paladin, you know, as we can see now, Life Coach going rogue into Orange's Paladin, probably feeling pretty okay about that. Um, but this Demon Lock, I kind of want to see how it will perform versus the rest of Orange's lineup if it comes to it. Absolutely. Right now, we're going to see the Rogue versus Paladin, as you mentioned. So, um, overall, this matchup should be good for Rogue with all the clears and uh, possible sap whenever you need it. But uh, what do you think about life, coach ha life Coach's hand? It doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look great. I mean, he, he, like I said, he does have the backstabs for the early minions, but I imagine Thanos... Th this is the situation which you normally drop Thanos for card draw. It's effectively like a 1-1 one -one loot hoarder at this point. Yeah, and then Orange has everything almost. No, well, now he has everything. <laughs> <laughs> Orange has 30 cards in his hand. Uh, no, I know what you mean. Uh, Orange has a really good curve. He has most turn. He even has the coin if required if he needs to accelerate anything. And again, as we've seen, low theb in this matchup, especially when Life Coach is running gadgets, and it's going to be pretty, uh, potentially pretty powerful. Yeah, he has a uh, perfect curve. He has everything he needs. And um, Life Coach actually picked up uh, an AoE card. So that, that's good for him. Uh, he didn't have a good uh, response to Master for Battle. But yeah, now he has now, one. Yeah, it's suddenly, uh, I don't know. I mean, it's really tough to see how Life Coach has been playing uh, this, this past few series. There's a chance he might just drop Pillager and say, you know, tank it all. Uh, because otherwise, Flurry and Hero Power seems just a little bit slow. You don't gain anything on the board by doing that. Uh, whereas if the Pillager goes in, it has the difference of clearing the board and he gains the coin. The problem with Pillager, though, if there's a Keeper of uh, Uldaman or just a simple True Silver, uh, you lose it, and the Paladin will be fine losing that uh, that health. That's not even that much. Like With True Silver Champion, you, you, you only take 3 damage from uh, from Pillager, effectively. Yeah, the True Silver follow-up is going to be pretty nice, I think. What do you actually like, though? The True Silver or the, uh, the Keeper to put a minion on the board? I think True Silver is a bit better. Because you still uh, keep your free minions on board, and um, with with keeper you just uh, almost lose everything. Like you you have a three four and a one one, or maybe keeper actually because you can uh, attack with a weapon. Um, so it's all, all it's really close. It's really close call yeah. here. 
I think the good thing here is, and why True Silver won out, is because next turn is like either another Pillager, um, as your Drake, for example. You know, the, almost any minion live coach plays next turn is dead, um, guaranteed. Uh, and then he can still do things with Keeper now, or save it till later if he needs to, because next he has Lothar or Coin Challenger with two minions on the board. Yeah, that's super strong. That that's the benefit of um, of weapons mostly that uh, they give you uh, a great attack for two turns at least. Yeah, definitely. You sort of drop a little bit of board control to gain tempo in, over the course of two turns, which we're uh, we're gonna see coming now, and which is why Live Coach didn't obviously just play the Azure Drake because he knows it just straight up dies to the uh, the True Silver. So he wants to bait out the attack of the True Silver on the free free and have a, a better Azure Drake later. Also, Azure Drake can provide him with a nice eviscerate for five damage. Uh, which will be a tempo play if there is something else than Lotha. Like, if that would be a Sludge Belcher, he would possibly just play Azure Drake, Coin, Eviscerate next turn. But because yep. it's, it's Lotha, it will be um, a bit awkward. Yeah, and Life Coach does go into his own Belcher here. And, um, hmm, it's really rough to, like, even want to play anything at this point. You do have to drop Belcher because Drake doesn't do enough, but you just know Belcher is going to get cleaned up pretty. Uh, Pretty well by the low fed. Yeah, but I think you you are still fine that you are able to deal some damage with the SI seven. And uh, even though, like the one to, the Belcher dies, the one who blocks the weapon attack at least this turn. Oh, we're seeing are we seeing coin boom instead of challenger? It's interesting. Yeah, that's uh, probably most power on board this turn, and uh, you do have that low fed that needs to be dealt with. You has you have still the weapon, so it's pressuring the board uh, the board the most. Yeah, and I guess the, the re one of the reasons behind this as well is because there's a weapon equipped by Life Coach, a 1 2, and a 3 3 on the board. There's definitely potential to like proc the uh, proc the Noble Sacrifice quite easily and then still have minions to do some work afterwards. Whereas if you play Challenger on a more of an empty board, the Noble Sacrifice becomes much more of a big deal for the Rogue. So there is a couple of plays here for Life Coach, and uh, I think most of them require Azure Drake. So you can play Azure Drake, Drake hard. And then you can either eviscerate boom and kill it with uh, a Psy, or I like I kind of like Flurry as well. So Azure Drake run free both minions into boom for four damage, fifth damage with the weapon attack, and then you Flurry and clear the board. And Azure Drake might tank some bomb damage there. Yeah, that's true. I think Azure Drake will need to tank the bomb damage because Life Coach would take seven by doing that. And uh, then potentially the bombs. It like coach does look like he's uh, leaving the leaving the boom up though, and uh, the bomb snipes the taunt, which looked by life coach's facial expression, he probably didn't want to happen. <laughs> um, and now this is this board is just looking stronger and stronger for orange. Yeah, now he can slam the the challenger as well. Um, so he has a really good tool to deal with the, the pillager, go eight to face, and pressure life coach even more. Even being able to squeeze in a secret keeper, just one additional minion that could get avenged, which means you're not all in on one one minion on its own. That is really nice. You got a coin though. Double coin. <laughs> Sounds like cheating. Imagine if secret keeper buffed from mysterious challenger. That would be so overpowered. <laughs> yeah, that would be. Um... <laughs> I think at some point, like one patch, there was a, a bug or something that it got buffed once or something. That's sure kind of that. crazy. Okay, so is there a way to survive? Is there a way to actually clear this board on the back of uh, Eviscerate and Flurry? That's uh, Life Coach has potentially 10 points of mana. He has a sap as well. And uh, So does he need to attack in? Hope and Avis goes on... Ugh. Challenger, I guess, is the best one, and then sap the challenger, and then that's two mana, and then as your Drake, this, oh, he doesn't have enough. Is he one one mana off uh, as your Drake abyss flurry after a sap? Can you you can sap Doctor Boom, right? I mean, it's it's not great, but it's seven mana that uh, your opponent will have to commit to. Oh, yeah, a... I think you have to. I think you, the pressure's on to sap whatever got uh, avenged if it was one of the two big guys. Well, Life Coach died. Oh, wow. How did they die to the bombs? And nothing is going Life Coach way this game. Those and bombs, already, 
it's going to be a hard sell for Orange not to just slam Dr. Boom and another secret keeper and just pile under pressure because there's two seven attack minions on the board. Yeah. He doesn't have lethal, right? Uh, now with no. this, uh, how much is Oh, this? just is Juggler. Oh, is Juggler lethal? 11, and then Juggler is uh, plus two. That's. Uh... Yeah, did he just miss lethal? No, 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 no. I think that was like one off. Um, oh, he needed one more mana to play the secret keeper as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, yeah, he was one off lethal, but it doesn't really matter. Orange takes game two in a pretty convincing fashion, and Life Coach just seemed on the back foot throughout most of that match. Well, he's not dead yet. We've seen Show losing 0 2 and then coming back. But um, Life Coach is hard pressure. Like, if, I think if Life Coach loses games, he gets uh, more and more agitated, even though he doesn't show it normally. Uh, he's getting stressed, so we will see if he will be able to uh, win versus Orange's Rogue three times with uh, his full lineup. Yeah, we're going to see the Rogue Mirror, hopefully, which I, I do enjoy that matchup. Um, except I imagine, or I'm pretty sure Orange's Rogue is a, a fair bit different to Life Coach's, uh, in terms of Orange is probably playing the Oils, I think. Yeah, yeah, um, playing an oil, ro oil Rogue. Yeah, so... Um, so yeah, that'll be really interesting to see how those two decks line up. If that's the one we see, Life Coach might actually switch decks. Rogue is so interesting in this meta game. I I think I can honestly say it's like a Rogue class. <laughs> that's pretty pretty good work on that one, then. Pretty good work. Um, but yeah, uh, it's it's weird the way you don't see a lot of people playing it, but a lot of the pros rate it in terms of like competitive, uh, like in in tournaments specifically. Yeah, that's absolutely true. And um, versus Paladin, versus Druid. Also, uh, you can have those small tweaks in the deck, um, tweaks in the deck as well. So um, I enjoy the class. And this is what you want to Raven. This is the Rogue Mirror. So can you take me through it? What are the most important cards? Okay, so this is really uh, it's it's a little bit off Mirror because Life Coach isn't playing cards like uh, Sprint and uh, Oil, which are like the common Rogue setup. Uh, but I do believe it's going to be uh, down to potentially two points. Either one gets the uh, the early sort of backstab SI7 agent and then steamrolls from there with maybe a deadly poison as well, because that does so well versus all the rogue minions. Or it will be down to who can get the, the card drawer off. So Life Coach needs the gadget end with a few spells, whereas Orange will probably need like, prep into sprint, or maybe if the game goes long enough, just to sprint on its own. What about a big flurry in weapons? Because uh, this is also really important in tempo games. Uh, whoever gets a deadly poison earlier and uh, is able to cast a flurry that not only deals damage because you attack with the weapon to face, but also clear the board can, can take the game, right? Yeah, 100%. And I think that these guys, because of that kind of the, the sort of blowout turn that the rogue can do with the big flurries, will intentionally play around that and not be too heavy on the board. Uh, or commit to the board and then drop a card, as we can see in Orange's hand, like Lotheb, to guard it for like maybe one more turn. But I think these guys will be just trying to keep like two minions on the board just to avoid the, the flurries and uh, just build up the tempo from there. As Orange looks like he's playing like a super standard oil list here. Yeah. So who, who would you favor, knowing the list more or less? Um, I think I would favor the oil list because it, uh, if you notice life coach doesn't really play burst he relies heavily on minions he's running two tomb pillagers two gadgets and the emperor two violet teachers all of which we can see in his hand and whereas orange being able to combo more and pull off those bigger flurries because he is running oils i think is probably more favored here and the fact that like prep sprint or just sprint on its own is like two to one cards whereas life coach won these six mana to play the auctioneer, and then I would say at least two spells to get enough card draw to make it good. So uh, I think, yeah, I think I think the rogues favored here. All right, so orange is favored, and um, not only favored in deck lists, uh, it, he seems to be favored on board as well because life coach didn't get any spells. He has only minions in his hand, so very passive, and that, that huge that sap was huge as well as a tempo play. There is a sap for life coach. But uh, no preparation for that, and uh, just trying to replay the pillager and hope for the best. Yeah, and there's even a backstab oh now if he really wants God. it to clear up. But he doesn't even need it. He could actually just play the... Uh, he's going to go for the Drake. Okay, so he's going to go for the Drake and clear, I think. Um, well, that backstab was so amazing, crazy. I think, because yeah. he's not losing a minion here. Just backstab and the weapon attack. Take that 5 damage gladly and continue bashing life coach. 
Yeah, this is insane. He could have cleared it with the 3-3, and if he felt under threat, he could have played Lothab to have, like, a really safe turn. But, like, th there's not a lot Life Coach can do at this point. Uh, so Lothab can be saved for a bit later when it's going to be more of an impactful turn. And next turn, if he wants it, Orange has prep sprint, which is going to be huge. Is Life Coach forced to slam Torison here? Like, coin Torison, backstab, uh, weapon attack into the free free. And uh, then after Torison, because he has so many minions in hand that are almost unplayable, hope that he will be able to come back um, in this game through the board with those smaller minions. Like, I I'm just thinking about other options here. And uh, it's ob it's not that great for him because he's throwing the spells away, so he will not be able to leverage um, Gadgets and Auction here. But if he goes for something else like Violet Teacher and not doesn't really deal with... Well, Violet yeah. Teacher Sap, possibly. There's an option where he could play Tomb Pillager and just backstab and kill the 3-3. And then when Tomb Pillager dies, it means he can use Gadgets and double coin next turn. Uh, just to hopefully cycle into more spells and have two mana to spend. He does go for the backstab SI sap just to try and wrestle the ball back from Orange because, as we said, Life Coach's hand is just full of minions at the moment. Interesting that he finds a different play still, but uh, he values that coin. He wants to, to use the coin with Gadget on, and uh, that makes a lot of sense as well. Okay, and... Um... That's, uh, that means that the orange doesn't have minions for now, but he has the deck hand and he picks up oil. So that's uh, a lot of damage in the, in the future. He still has preparation. What's the best play here, though? Is it just Lothab because it's the biggest minion? Potentially, yeah. I mean, Lothab just doesn't straight up die. Um, hmm. He could, as your Drake prep fan, kill the 3-3. Three, three. But that feels like an awful lot for a 3-3 and still doesn't really guarantee much. And you're using prep when you have oil and deck hand in hand. So um, I think I think Lothab's pretty safe. It's just you just drop it. You know, there's nothing too crazy going to happen next turn. And then Life Coach, you know, needs to find one damage to actually clear off Lothab. And bear in mind, if Life Coach is forced to use his face to kill Lothab, that's an additional five, which means it's just getting closer and closer to this, like, oil charge turn from the deck hand. Yeah, and that oil charge can just finish the match, eliminate Life Coach from the tournament, because this is elimination match in, in uh, Group C. If Life Coach loses it, he's out, and Orange will uh, not advance yet, but he'll have to face Strife Crow, and uh, one of them will advance to the, to the playoffs. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much all to play for, and being 2-0 down, Life Coach is going to be feeling a little bit rough now, as Orange drops the Azure Drake, and doesn't have too many options. He could just straight up backstab and... Uh, Oh, okay. Backstab and trade? Backstab yeah. It's not terrible, actually. Oh, Fun of Knives. Oh, man, preparation yep. of Fun of Knives is so huge here. Yeah, this guards his board, and now suddenly he has a uh, next turn, if he really wants, he can sort of weapon deck hand oil, and then he still has another oil for the turn after to push even more damage. And as we can see, what's Life Coach actually going to do about this board? Uh, there is nothing. Azure Drake uh, might draw him a card. Fun of Nights might draw him a card, but it looks really grim for now. Really grim. So... I'm just trying to think what he can actually draw into. Like, if does he need to say like gadgets and coin fan or something? But I don't know what that would actually do in in terms of actually you know impacting the board enough to draw this game back. So I'm I'm trying to find anything. Uh, Raven is there like. <laughs> Gadgets on into, but uh, that, I think that, he needs to gadgets on something because his hand is so bad at, at dealing with what's on the board. He literally has nothing other than playing minions and hoping. Um, yeah, let's see what he draws. Like this would help, obviously. Like if he deals with reasonable. one minion, if he deals with one minion at least, does it help? Like there is double oil coming, so double oil will be nine damage, ten damage from the weapon, fourteen. Right? So it's uh, not lethal yet? No, I think... Um, well, it's lethal now. Like, if the minions are here, um, or yeah. you can just slam double oil and win. That's 9, 10, uh, 19 damage. Yep, that's it, isn't it? So we're just checking out damage, uh, counting how much is it, uh, but it's basically first oil is free, uh, plus 3 on the weapon, and the second one with, with the combo lands on one of the minions as well. So it's enough, and Orange takes the match, eliminates Life Coach from the tournament, 3-0. to zero. Wow. Yeah, and we saw that, that Life Coach is, like, 
his sort of homebrew of his own version of Rogue, uh, definitely struggled. And uh, let's be honest, he's drawing only minions pretty much for the first like four turns, five turns of a Rogue Mirror. Definitely isn't the way you win that matchup and uh, definitely suffered due to that. Yeah, absolutely true. All right, so this means we have one more match for you guys today. Uh, that will be Orange versus Strife Crew. Another elimination match. The winner is going to advance to the playoffs and the loser is eliminated. And obviously tomorrow we have a full day of games again with uh, Group D. So for now, stay tuned for more Hearthstone after a short break.